Up and down the country, archaeologists are unearthing the burial rituals and rites of passage of generations past. In the ancient village of Poulton, Cheshire, a group of archaeologists led by Mike Emery are investigating the site of a burial ground belonging to a small medieval community. Over 270 bodies have already been exhumed. What we hope these excavations today and beyond will aid us in understanding is how family groups in the farming community during the medieval period, how they existed, how they worked, how they ate, how they lived, how they died. In medieval times, it was believed that bodies should be buried on the holy ground, but lack of space meant that later burials often disturbed earlier ones. Osteoarchaeologist Kirsty McLeod leads a team of students to sort through the bones. He's probably had the best clean of his teeth ever. If they brushed their teeth like this in the medieval times, I don't think they would have had these problems. <laughs> teeth really preserve well. Teeth um, preserve better than bone, so you get left with the teeth. Um, they're in very good condition. The roots of these teeth are really, really quite good. Um, but their actual attrition on the teeth um, is really bad because of the diet that they had. So, um, yeah, they're quite rotten, really, and very, very worn. This is an old individual, so these teeth are very worn. I don't think they had a lot of sugar in the diet. I think it was more gritty, sandy type of diet. I would imagine that they lived with a diet of a lot of wheat and grain and things like that, so quite gritty. Um, they probably did quite a lot of things occupational-wise with their teeth also, so that would add a reflection on the attrition on their teeth. On the south side of the cemetery, Mike has been called to a recently opened grave, where unusually two skeletons have been found side by side, relatively undisturbed. Archaeologist Alan Wilmshurst explains the findings. The two later burials we think are contemporary. Uh, the one here uh, we believe to be male, and this one here we believe to be female. Uh, obviously we'll get more information when the bodies are actually lifted. They've obviously been placed very, very carefully, side, almost side by side. They're certainly covered by the same soil, so that's why we think they're contemporary. The other interesting thing is that the, the arm positions as well, they're both similar. Yes. Aren't they? They're yeah. exactly the same. Yeah. Arms by side and arms inside the groin was a traditional early medieval trait. Um, it was a burial practice that they did then. Um, and then I think as the years have progressed, um, arms across the chest and I believe arms in prayer, which we haven't found any of, became a later medieval uh, burial practice. There's two possible scenarios at the moment. Do we have a father, a mature male, possibly father and daughter, or could it be father and bride, woman, wife, who knows? That's the kind of thing that we can only really establish through osteological or bone analysis, uh, through uh, laboratory work. The next task is to carefully remove the bones from the grave. Right, and gently. Rock it side to side. I'll pull it towards you. Got it? Yeah. There you go. Once both skeletons have been removed, they'll be prepared for analysis so Mike and the team can see if the mystery will be solved. At archaeological burial sites across Britain, we're still piecing together a story of death and family which stretches back to our very beginnings. In Cheshire, Mike Emery and his team have discovered a medieval burial site at which two skeletons have been found, unusually buried side by side. The remains have been removed for analysis and bone specialist Ray Carpenter has come up with a surprising revelation. Well, Ray, what have we got here? The two that were excavated side by side are both females, which is in itself is quite mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. This one is the better preserved of them. They're both elderly. You give me an age. At what least kind? 50. That's not a bad age, is it? They're both of similar height. This one, the better one preserved, she's about five foot five and a half. The other one, which is less well preserved over there, she's about five foot four and a half. So only about an inch difference. 
That's and a good average size, though, isn't it? That is better than average. The yeah, average yeah. female at, at uh, Poulton here is five foot three, so they are above average in that sense. And five foot five is actually going some. Mm -hmm. She's had her fair share of things going on. For example, she's had um, arthritis in her knee, which is, would have been quite painful in life. She's also, at some point in her life, broken a couple of ribs over here. The other thing that's interesting to me, at least, is that, as you can see, she's lost virtually all her teeth, mm -hmm. but as a consequence, you can see how her bottom jaw protrudes out, giving what uh, is informally known <coughs> as a witch's chin. Right, well, I've looked at all the artefacts that came up in the actual grave fill for these two individuals, and they're quite consistently late 13th century to 14th century. Anything that might suggest that they're possibly related, given that they are contemporary burial? They are certainly... Uh, quite comparable in size and similar age at death as well. But the likelihood is that they are related in some way, given that they are from the local village. They are from the local village. And the village would have been relatively small, and of course is into marriage, that kind of thing, so could be sisters, cousins. <coughs> yes, <coughs> indeed. Knows? I would like to think that they are related, given that they are buried together. <laughs> yes. I think all we can say is they have died at the same time, mm. possibly from exactly the same cause. Could be flu. Could be TB, you know, it could be anything that's, you know, that today we are inoculated against. We can very rarely tell cause of death from a skeleton. Most things that kill people only affect the soft tissue. They have no impact on the bone. So unfortunately, we have no idea what what these. So your ideas of, you know, an influenza or something like that would have, would be very reasonable and, and, and very very plausible. And in terms of that sort of possible family connection, if they are living together then obviously the one is going to affect the other. You know, if somebody contracts yes. something like that, then maybe that's going to follow on. So, um, yeah, I like to speculate that they are related in some way or other.